안녕하세요. 허인식 원장입니다. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Hoinshik. This is online master course, which summarizes what is done in offline master course. Today, I want to talk about the one MS guide for narrow alveolar ridge. I'm going to talk about two topics. I'm going to talk about MS implant and indication for one MS guide. I want to talk about how to use the 1MS Guide Kit and its characteristics. MS Implant and 1MS Implant Guides Indications MS Implant is placed using 1MS Kit. It is used when the bone width is narrow or when a narrow interdental space exists. If regular type implant cannot be used, you can use MS implant. You can place it using the guide. One MS guide kit can be used in this end. As shown in the lower anterior area, MS implant can be placed in an ideal manner. The bone width is very narrow and interdental space is tight. In this case, MS implant can be a perfect alternative. On the day of implant placement or about a week later, after bleeding has stopped and upon stitch out, a temporary crown can be provided early on. After osteointegration period, the final prosthesis can be delivered and you can provide the ideal prosthesis for lower anterior. This is the biggest benefit with MS implant. This was a case that has been performed before introduction of MS implant. As you can see, three anterior teeth in the lower are missing. The best option at the time was a 3.5 diameter TS implant. That was one of the options that could be chosen. This implant is two-piece. What is the problem in restoring lower anterior with two-piece implants? TS 3.5 mini implant was placed. This was placed as close to adjacent teeth as possible. Healing is complete and it's time for prosthesis delivery as shown and log ways were used to take impression and lab analog was used and model was poured. Appropriate stock abutment did not exist. This is not used these days, but at the time, UCLA abutment using gold, which was frequently used then, was used. Interns who have earned their license these days may not have heard of UCLA abutment. This was frequently used about 20 years ago. This is a gold-casted abutment. This is before when custom abutments became available. Gold abutment was fabricated and final prosthesis was completed like this. As you can see, this area, the embrasure area is very tight. It's blocked and in certain cases, it's very difficult to provide appropriate crown and ponic size. This looks very congested and it's not easy to adjust the width. In terms of maintenance, there can be many problems. Six months have elapsed and you can slightly see through the abutment. You can see that there has been additional recession after 12 years and in this area, it looks as if tooth brushing will not be easy here. Mini Connection 3.5 abutment 
There is a limitation in reducing apartment size, and it's quite difficult to recreate the anatomical form of lower anterior. As for this case, that the lower anterior bridge condition worsened it and it was removed and immediate implant placement was performed. I want to talk about the benefit of MS implant prosthesis. As shown, number 41 and 31 were extracted. One MS guide was used to place two MS implants in the planned area. They were accurately placed in the determined area. It was placed like this. A suture was done. 3D printer was used to provide provisional. After osseo integration, prep was done in the undercut area. Through adjustment, prosthesis was designed using digital dentistry and this was done modulus. In the end, very aesthetic and cleansable prosthesis was provided. As you can see, MS implant can replicate the lower anterior teeth's innate diameter. I think this is almost the only option. One body implant. I recommend using this one body MS implant in lower anterior area. In order to place MS implant, there are a couple of reasons why you need to use a one MS guide. MS implant it is a one-piece design where implant and abutment are combined. Depending on placement direction, prosthesis process can be difficult if implant is buccally tilted or lingually tilted. If it is mesiodistally deviated, prosthesis may be difficult to provide. If the implant has been placed too deep or too shallow, fabrication and maintenance of a prosthesis can be quite difficult. Accurate placement depth is very important here. Hence, you need to use one MS guide to place the implant in the desired position. One MS guide can be used for MS implant and TS3 3.0 diameter implant. Today we're going to focus on MS implant. We're going to skip TS implant and focus just on MS implant. The diameters of MS implant, it's 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0, depending on bone width. If mesiodistal width is sufficient, you use 3.0, and if it is tight, you use 2.5 in general. In the case of 2.0, it is used for provisional. You place it, and after a couple of months, you remove it. Using an MS implant in the lower anterior area is favorable because the root and crown's axis is the same. That's why it is favorable. It is one body implant. The root and crown axis are almost the same. Therefore, one body implant is very favorable. In the case of upper anterior, the root and the crown axis slightly differ. Hence, it is not a fit for using one body implant. The axis of crown and root differ. In the case of upper anterior rather than MS implant, TS implant is preferred because when doing prosthodontic treatment, the angle needs to be adjusted or angled abutment needs to be used. You can use such options. In the case of lower anterior area, that is difficult to do so. I want to talk about how to use one MS kit and its advantages. 
In the case of one guide kit, the guide hole can be divided into mini and regular. 5.1 and in the case of 5.0 diameter implant, the guide hole size is 5.8. In the case of 1 ms, the diameter is 3.6. MSTS3 3.0 diameter implant can be used. If you look at the guide area, the stopper area in the case of one guide it is at 6.0 and 6.7. In the case of one MS, it is 4.5, so the bone width is narrow and it is reflective of that. The guide area of the guide drill part, as for one guide kit, it is 8 millimeters, and for 1 ms, it is 11. It is 3 millimeter longer. The guide is 3 millimeters longer in the case of 1 ms guide. As for the guide drill, it ranges from 1.5 to 2.7. You start off drilling using 8.5 and with double contact 11.5 millimeter drill is used to continue on with drilling you use double contact to get to the desired depths no mounted driver is used to place the implant in the case of MS implant there is a flat surface the arrow area of mount driver and the flat surface needs to be aligned. If this direction is deviated, implant may not be placed as planned. There's a separate one for TS and MS. When placing implant, rather than placing it to full depth using engine, you place it about 80% using engine and as for 20%, you apply manual torque to get the final position. That is the recommendation. As for MS implant, the gingival height is 2.5 and 4.0. Depending on peri-implant mucosa, you can choose accordingly. When placing implant with a gingival height of 2.5, you need to place the implant beyond the black line. When the gingival height is 4.0, you need to place the implant up to the point where it is just below the black line. That is the protocol. In other words, if gingival height is 2.5, when we place that implant, this should be fully within the guide and when placing implant with gingival height of 4.0, place the implant just below the black line. What we need to be careful of is that when we do immediate implant placement, at times so it is difficult to abide by this black line, so you need to remove the guide and adjust the implant's final depths. When placing MS denture, the adapter does not go in the guide hole, therefore you need to remove the guide and you need to place the implant to the desired depths. That is the recommendation. In the case of D1 bone with a very strong bone quality, when you place an implant, at times it is very difficult to separate the mount adapter with the implant. In such cases, you can use a drive separator. Put it between the adapter and if you lift it slightly, mount driver falls out, so it's a very useful tool. For placing MS implant when you do initial drilling, you need to use lance drill with a sharp tip.
This is to enter cortical bone easily. It punches the cortical bone and it allows for easy drilling subsequently. It's very thin. If you apply too much force or if the direction is wrong, there can be possibility of fracture. So you should not apply too much force. You need to use lance drill in order to punch. There is a high possibility of a fracture. It is very long and thin. If it is stuck too much or if the entry angle is too angled, then this area can be fractured, so you need to be careful about it. You need to use a bone flattening drill first and adjust the cortical bone once. You need to make it flat. You should not apply vertical force excessively. You need to drill gradually, almost as if doing a pumping action. Why should I use one MS guide to place MS implant? When should I use it? Let me summarize about this point. MS implant is most functional and aesthetic choice when you face a narrow ridge. Second, MS implant is a one-piece implant. Implant and abutment are one piece. Therefore, implant placement depth and direction is most important. It is one piece, so it's difficult to tilt the abutment direction. It is unlike TS implant. You need to place the implant with accurate direction and depth. So rather than placing it based on our intuition, you need to use one MS guide to adjust the implant placement direction and depth. This is essential in minimizing error in prosthodontic phase and to provide the best prosthesis for the patient. You need to use one MS guide when placing MS implant, and this is strongly recommended. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in specifics, please refer to offline master course. You'll be able to get more details and access more cases. Thank you.